What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are back with the new look rebuild series where we do at least five seasons on each team and we did the magic yesterday and now we're doing the Phoenix Suns. Clearly the Phoenix Suns will try to run it back and contend again in this Western Conference. Truly I don't think they'll be able to so it's going to be very interesting to see what they end up doing with this roster but obviously we probably won't know an answer on what they'll do until the trade deadline but let's go ahead jump in talk about what the Suns have done and do this new look five-year Phoenix Suns rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you're new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciate it. So basically what I think we're going to do, by the way, we are using Joda Kelmer's share scenario for this video because uh, I keep getting asked that in the comment section below. Joda Kelmer is the share scenario that I am using uh, for this video. So basically how we're going to do this video is we're going to let 2K decide what this team is doing at the deadline if we are completely trash i'm gonna try to go get my draft picks back from houston because apparently they want durant or booker anyway but if we're doing good then maybe i just let it ride i don't know but what they've done this off season is of course they re-signed russell neal they re-signed bull bull they acquired monty morris which i think is actually a really good get because i needed a backup center and then you also have mason plumley is like the backup five they brought in so obviously the phoenix suns are very limited on what they could actually do uh, but this is what they've done. So nothing like too outlandish or crazy. Basically, you're going to be running back with your big three. They are definitely over the second apron. As soon as Matt Ishbia came in, he went all in, as we all know. And I definitely think it'll be a mistake in the long run, but I guess we'll see how they do this upcoming season. Of course, as we all know, they got swept by Minnesota last year, but this will be a full season where they can go again and see how it goes. So we got the 10th seed or 10th, not 10th seed, we're 10th power ranking. But here is what it's going to look look like. So we got uh, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Rose Neal, and Nurkic. So I do believe that could be the starting five. I could also see Grayson Allen starting. Now, I will say one thing I guess the Suns could do, because while they're over the second apron and their draft picks are very limited, Grayson Allen does make a little bit of money now to where maybe you could bring something back uh, under $15 million. Um, we'll see what that could end up being, if anything. But Grayson Allen, Monty Morris, Bull Bull, and Nasir Little is rotation. And Josh Kogi also just got resigned recently. And that leaves like Plumley out of the rotation, I guess. But we're running 10 minute rotation. That way we are getting backup minutes from Plumley. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll put Plumley in over, I guess. I mean, Bull Bull, I guess, technically is the back of five right now. So I guess we could just leave it that, leave it like that. And we'll just leave it how it is. So let's go ahead. So my year number one, we're going to let 2K decide on what we're going to do with this team at the deadline. Do we ship things off? Or do we try to maybe buy? I mean, there's a chance we're not going to be able to get anything. But if we're good enough at the Western Con or good enough at the deadline in the Western Conference, I don't see Matt Ishbia selling off Durant or Booker. But uh, if we're mid or, you know, kind of under 500, then you got to consider it. But would he is the question. Today's video is brought to you by two softwares that are designed to help you beat the sports book and become a much profitable sports better. So let's start with the DGF Optimizer Daily Grind Fantasy. So they have an optimizer, an AI slip generator, and also a middling tool. So basically what the optimizer does, which is their main product, is it compares discrepancies across sports books. Now, I will say we're in a very dead week right now. Baseball on its, on its all-star break and no other sports are going on. So as of right now, there's really only esports on the board. And I like to look at least two data points. But basically what this does, like I said, it compares discrepancies. So it's just like if you were buying a car. You got the under six and a half over on price picks while two other books are listing it at 15 and a half and 14 and a half. So it would make no sense to take the over on price picks. We can get it at a better price on underdog or hot streak. So you might as well just take the under on price picks because obviously the prices are mismatched. That's basically how this whole thing works. And it's a absolute be absolutely beautiful thing. Instead of betting with your gut or your emotions or what you think, you let the data tell you, you let the math tell you. And trust me, it pays off in the wrong run. So DGF for uh, prize picks underdog and all those DFS apps is very good. And then of course we also have the Oz Jam positive EV tool while they have some other things as well. They also have a fantasy optimizer, uh, but what the Oz Jam positive EV tool does, while it will show you some uh, fantasy plays, this primarily focuses on the actual sports book. So, um, you know, we got a couple of plays on fanatics here. And like I said, very dead time right now. But uh, as you can see, you got under nine and a half at minus 110. When you have two other books listing that listing this at minus 140 and minus 139 so once again taking that same principle that i just talked about on prize picks why would you go bet this on uh DraftKings or FanDuel when you can get this at a better price at minus 110 over on fanatics it's the same principle and that's how you line shop and become a much profitable sports better so make sure to check out both tools 
uh, down in the description below. Uh, links are down in the description and you get a percentage off when you use my code. I believe it's 25% off on DGF and 15% off on Ajam. Both links in the description. Make sure to check it out. Other than that, let's get back to the video. So at the end of year number one, Shea wins MVP. Alex Sarge, is your rookie of the year. Russ is your sixth man. Wemby defensive player. Keontae George most improved. And Zach Levine is your clutch player. And Nick Nurse is your coach of the year. So here's your NBA first team, all NBA second, all NBA third, and then all defensive first team and all defensive second team. So I actually did try to stop at the trade deadline to get our picks back, but Houston was not budging. Now, I probably could have made something happen, but I would have been selling Booker for extremely low. So I think it was best to take this to the offseason. But we did make it to the play-in tournament. And the reason why I was trying to sell uh, for our picks back is because we were 22 and 28 at the deadline. And we were just mid, man. And I don't really know if we're even going to get to the playoffs at this point. So we're just going to see what happens. But I'm definitely still on the hunt for potentially getting my picks back in this video, especially in this 2025 class. If I would have been able to get my picks back, I absolutely would have liked got them back and then just tank the rest of the season and try to get Cooper flag to start this video. But unfortunately uh, I could not get Houston to give us our picks back unless I was going to sell Booker for like extremely low, which I just don't think makes sense to do. Uh, but it looks like we might win the first leg of the plan against the Kings. So the Kings go home after the DeMar DeRozan addition. And now we get the Clippers who of course lost Paul George. Now it would be lovely if we got in, let's see if we do. And we got the lead right now, but the Clippers have taken it back and it looks like we might be going home. So yeah, this team clearly is not good enough. We have gotten bounced in the playing tournament. So we need to reset things, man. That's where we're at. So we are about to be a lottery team. So we got Houston, or sorry, not Houston, Oklahoma City and New York. And I was thinking about Houston because I'm going to get the, like, hopefully get my picks back. But the New York Knicks go on to win it all. Brunson with the pay cut, it pays off. He gets a championship. So here are all your retirements, some pretty significant ones. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of interesting retirements here. But let's go straight to... Uh, draft lottery i guess because we're gonna find out where our pick ends up now it would really suck if this pick jumped up all the way to like number one because then why would houston give it to us then but we have pick number 12 or projected best odds uh at 12 and yeah so we get number 12 if we try to get our pick back but again i think at this point getting 12 in this draft class would be better than trying to run this thing through the ground and keep running it back because clearly this just is not working so uh we are going to try to make something happen now i saw the thunder have utah's picks so we're going to fix that as well uh we're going to fill out this coaching staff i guess mike boonholzer is going to be here i don't want to fire another coach for them to pay they're already paying like monty williams and i think they're paying frank vogel as well so yeah i doubt they'd want to fire you know mike boonholzer as well uh so i think it's time that you quit blaming the coaches and blame what you have and that is booker or durant now i will tell you when i try to trade durant or booker to the rockets they wanted booker way more than they wanted durant so i definitely think we're gonna have to send them devin booker but as long as we get a really good haul i'm fine with that so we're gonna go talk to the rockets again now ideally i want to get uh as many good young players as possible so if we can get like jabari in the trade in our 13th pick that'd be beautiful uh if we could get tari easton in the trade that'd be beautiful I doubt they'd give us Almond Thompson, but I'll try. So I definitely have to make all these young players accept their options really quickly. But then we could start talking about it. That way we have control of our 13th pick on draft night. So I'm going to go fix Utah's pick. And then I'm going to go accept all those options for the Rockets. And we can start talking business and try to send them Booker to get our picks back. So now that we fixed that Utah and Thunder pick, we're going to go talk to the Rockets about getting our picks back. I think this is the best way to go about this video. So we're trying to get our 2025, 2027. We're also trying to get two young players out of them. Now I'm going to start at the top of the totem pole with Jabari and Amon Thompson because that would be beautiful stuff if we can get them. But as you can see, they do not value Kevin Durant whatsoever. So the idea of us getting Kevin Durant or trading Kevin Durant for all this is not going to happen. So unfortunately, it does have to be D-Book. D-Book is going to become a rocket here. But man, if we can get 2025, 2027 Jabari and Amon Thompson, I walk away happy. If you're... The Suns, maybe you can get more than that. And I could definitely see your point of view if you think that. But I think getting Jabari and Amon Thompson would be an absolute home run. They don't agree to it, though. At least not yet. Okay, so maybe we can't get both of them. Let's throw a couple seconds in here to see what they say then. They're still not interested. Another second. I hate that I have to throw this many seconds in here. So clearly, we can't get both. Oh, we could throw Duran in here. That'd be crazy. I'm not throwing both of them. Although... That would be wild if Houston could trade for both of them. That'd be crazy, but I don't even know how they could pull that off. All right, so we're not going to do that. So Jabari and Amon Thompson clearly is not going to happen. So what if we get Jabari 
and you give me maybe uh, Cameron Whitmore instead. So Jabari and Cameron Whitmore for 2025 and 2027. Jabari and uh, and then can I get like a you know a late pick in 2029 or something? There's like no value on it. Still not agreeing to this trade. Second, second, another second, another second. I can't throw another player in here because we're of the second apron. And unbelievable, they're still saying no. They still say no to this. What if I get rid of the first? I hate that I have to throw this many seconds in here. It's so stupid. And we still can't make anything happen. Okay. All right. Well, what if we only get Whitmore and maybe Tar Eason? Can we do that? No, we still can't make something happen. The Rockets are being very stubborn here. Second, a second, another second. I mean, come on. You're getting Devin freaking Booker. Let's 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 do something. Let's talk business. Like, what are we actually doing here? Whitmore and Tar Eason. This is only the 13th pick overall, by the way. It's not like the best pick in this draft. I don't know why this can't happen. Okay. What if we just got Almond Thompson out of the deal? And then that 2029 first. I would love two young players out of it, but you know, Houston's being so stubborn. Oh my goodness, bro. Can we please make something happen here? Like, why is this such a hassle? There, we finally got something. I don't love it. I, you know, if I'm the Suns, I would want more for Devin Booker. But you know what? I will take Amon Thompson and whatever I get with this 13th or 12th overall pick, sorry, and reset this thing. Uh, that was kind of a pain in the ass, but we got it done. Again, if you're watching that as a Suns fan and want more for Devin Booker, completely understandable. I tried to make that happen. I maybe could have overrided it and everyone would have agreed with it. But, you know, for the people that would complain about me cheating, I'm not going to do that, obviously. So, uh, Hugo, let's just see what we get at number 12. We got to make this pick count. So, we got Jaleel, we got BJ Edgecombe, Trey Johnson, Dink, we got Nolan Traore. And then at number 13, we have Noah, we have Ian Jackson, we have Jason Richardson, Damian Sarr, Colin Murray is down here as well. I think I kind of like the idea of Noah. So we got All Star, All Star, All Star. Ian Jackson's All NBA. I think we take the All NBA guy. So Ian Jackson of North Carolina. So Amon Thompson, Ian Jackson resets this thing. So Devin Booker is now a Rocket. Ian Jackson, David Roddy, we can accept because he'll probably kind of fit things here. Uh, and we definitely should be under the second apron now, by the way, which is phenomenal. And now we could trade Mr. Kevin Durant. So that is where we'll turn our attention to next. Now, as you guys saw, he had like no trade value, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to get for him, but we pretty much have our point guard of the future and Amon Thompson, which is great. And now we have so many small forwards. It's not even funny. We just drafted Ian Jackson, who I really want to play a huge part of things. We got Ryan Dunn down here, uh, but let's see what we can get for Kevin Durant now that we've traded Devin Booker to Houston. So now that we've traded Devin Booker away, we're trying to look at a Kevin Durant trade, but only a select few teams actually value him as a superstar. If I gave him to another team, they only had him as a one-star trade value. So... The Lakers, the Bulls, and the Kings were like three teams that actually value Kevin Durant at four and a half stars. So I guess we're going to try to send him to the Lakers. because I think that would make like maybe the most sense. AD or sorry, LeBron retired. So they may need a replacement. They're Vanderbilt, Rui, Huchifino, Connect, and two first. I don't know if they'll give this much for Durant. Uh, they say no for now. But what if it's only one first on top of everything? And they want a first round in 2027. I can't do that. I won't give you my 2027 first. But I will throw like all these seconds in here if you really want. Okay, so we trade Durant to LA. So now we have a reset on our hands. So Bradley Beal is here with a no trade clause. I really don't think anyone's trading for that $53 million. So he is going to be stuck here for at least one more year. Nurkic can be here and you know expire in the offseason. Right now, we kind of have just a weird rotation at the moment. But we have successfully traded away Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and have reset this thing. So clearly, we're kind of hoping to just suck as much as possible. Now, our 2026 pick, obviously, uh, we aren't going to have it. I believe that is going to belong to, of course, uh, the Brooklyn Nets in 2026. Or um, did they get the 2026 pick? Or Sorry, I don't know where their 2026 pick is. Is it Orlando? I don't know. Maybe it's the Washington. I have no Oh, yeah, it looks like it's in Orlando. Okay, so I think what that is, though, I think Orlando can only swap that with the worst of Suns and Wizards. So we might be able to get that pick back, which is nice. All right, well... This is what our rotation is about to look like. We have a big pile of small forwards here. I don't really know what we're going to do with that just yet, but it doesn't really matter at the moment. The, ma the only thing I was worried about was resetting this thing and tanking because clearly we were not good. That took a while, but we finally accomplished on what we wanted to do. Amon Thompson gets to start next year. He'll start with Beal. 
and we'll eventually turn this thing into what we want to turn in it turn it turn it into but we are feeling good about that we get rid of booker and beal uh booker and durant i should say and now we have a reset on our hands and we'll see where it takes us next so we are soft the trade deadline as we are in asset acquisition mode. We're going to be sending Royce O'Neal over to the Cleveland Cavaliers for a 2028 swap worse with the Jazz from the Cavaliers. So we're going to get George's name's expiring salary, but that's going to be just one of the trades we make. I think we're going to try to do more here. So we send out, um, of course, um, we send out uh, Royce O'Neal, which feels great. So we got a draft pick. Now we're going to see what we can get for maybe Grayson Allison's services. I'm just trying to get as many draft picks as possible here. I got to make sure and see if I'm getting going to get offered draft picks. The Wizards don't want to offer me a draft pick. Um, who else maybe has first round pick value? So I did try to trade Rui, but no one offered me a first round pick. But if we move him to small forward, I wonder if that would make a difference. I don't know if it would, but he's an expiring contract. Probably won't resign him. So if we can get a first round pick for him here, that'd feel pretty good. So we do have the like Celtics offer me, you know, Drew Holiday, but I don't really want to do that. The fact that we get Kyrie Irving in this trade finder is kind of crazy. So... Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Obviously, Okungwu, uh, DeMar DeRozan. Like I said, I'm just looking for a draft pick, but I don't know if it will be offered to me. So we do have the Spurs offer me Keldon Johnson in a second round pick. I don't hate that, but I think I'd rather it be a first round pick. Maybe the Spurs would like Rui's game. Can I get a first from you instead? Now, this 2026 pick is probably good. So let's say it's a 2027 Spurs pick. I mean, you guys will probably be pretty good. We get Keldon Johnson. We get a first round pick for Rui. Uh, they want to make it a swap in 2027. We're not going to do that. I didn't mean to add Maxi as the three as a three team trade. So what if it's a 2028? I mean, I'm just trying to get anything. They want a 2029 Houston unprotected and we get a 20 not happening. Obviously not happening. So if we can't get a first, we just will, you know, settle on the, you know, Russ and Neil trade just being all we do, I guess. And once again, they want to swap it. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that either. So I guess Rui just may walk for nothing, which kind of sucks. Or we do resign him. I don't think there's anybody else that can trade worth uh, trade for first round picks. But hey, we got one first for Rose Neal. I guess I can't complain. So at the end of year number two, things were absolutely terrible. But one thing we got was Amon Thompson winning most improved player, which is nice. But uh, there's still a lot more we need to accomplish. But let's go ahead and see who goes on with the championship. And as far as your player stats are concerned on who averaged the most this year, it was Bradley Beal with 22 points per game. He had 15 from Grayson Allen, 13 from Dalton Connect. 13 from Roman Thompson, 11 from Rui, and then 9 from Nurkic, and 7 from Vanderbilt. So, let's go on to see who wins the championship. And by the way, I figured out this 2026 pick. So, apparently, uh, as quoted in this article, for simplicity's sake, it will be the least favorable between the Suns, Orlando Magic, Washington Wizards, and Memphis Grizzlies. So, we'll be making a pick, but it may not be very good, and our pick is probably headed somewhere else, unfortunately, because uh, we were extremely bad, but that was to be expected. But like I said, man, uh, yeah, you're it's gonna suck giving your pick to you know the magic But at the end of the day, man, you you got to do something here This is not working, but we are gonna get LA's pick which is nice So as you can see our pick is projected to be number one, but usually when I see a pick in the number one slot it falls to five and it stays at two so Yeah, that kind of sucks now as far as where we will be picking in this draft So it says our pick of course we got number nine via LA, which is nice So at least we got that going but so number two, and then I got to look between Wizards. So we're clearly not getting the Wizards pick at five. The Grizzlies are picking at 18 via Orlando. So, and then the Grizzlies have 23. So I think we're going to get that 23rd overall pick, apparently. If I'm doing the math correctly on that, I think that's what it's going to be. It's kind of a complicated swap, obviously. So I apologize if I'm wrong, but we can get that 23rd overall pick in this draft and uh, just take the best of it, I guess. So. Um, coaching staff is completely filled out again. We're going to let Mike Boonholzer play out his contract. Uh, I mean, we're not really in a rush to contend anyway. So we're about to go into year number three. We've gone through two seasons now, uh, but we have the ninth overall pick and we also have that 23rd pick from the Grizzlies. So let's go ahead and get that. And then we can, uh, see what we're going to get in the draft. All right. So let's jump in at pick number nine. So AJ is going to go one Harrington, number two, Aaron Boozer to the Hawks. So you got uh Koa P to the thunder. So they have a fantastic draft. Bryson goes to the Wizards, Jack goes to the Celtics, uh, Isaiah goes to the Spurs, and then Ja Johnson goes to the Jazz. Okay, so we have Darren Peterson, we have Drake Powell, we have Sid Gee, we have Kale Keem, uh, so starter, Sid Gee is starter, Drake's an all-star, and Peterson's an all-star. So Fisher, all-star, 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 
and starter okay so clearly we're gonna take someone with all-star potential so do i want drake powell or do i i think we take drake powell here that might give us our shooting guard of the future here so let's go ahead and take drake powell with number nine out of north carolina and then we can take uh whoever we can get here so bryce james all-star meek thomas starter uh vasquez all-star okay i don't know much about vasquez but let's get him as well out of brazil so math matthias vasquez out of brazil uh but we get a 77 or sorry that wasn't us we get a 76 overall um at number nine which feels pretty solid and then we can you know get vasquez who's a 71 probably won't play right away but uh regardless we got him so bradley Beal, of course accepts his option no surprise there but it is an expiring contract so there's a possibility we can get rid of it still not set in stone that we can but Nurkic, Rui, Roddy, Kogi, Nang are all free agents I don't plan on bringing any of them back so honestly let's just go ahead and get rid of all of them I'm not bringing anybody back so Nurk, uh, Rui I'm not bringing back David Ryan I'm not bringing back I'm not bringing back a Kogi I'm not bringing back George Nang so all those guys can be renounced their rights are gone okay so clearly it's in our rotation right now so Amon Thompson, Hochefino we got our new shooting guard with Ryan Dunn and Drake Powell which is nice so that's good uh, we got our small forwards and, you know, Dalton Connect, Grace Now, and Grace Now we can ship out of here. This year, a little we could ship out of here as well. And then Jared Venable right now is our power forward. Not really going to be the long-term answer there either. We have Igadaro as our starting center at this very moment. All right. So we're getting closer to where we want to be. I can try to send Bradley Beal out here. Uh, he's on an expiring contract now, so maybe teams would be fine for trading for it. But it's got to be like the right type of trade. And I'm not really sure anyone's like lining up to trade for Bradley Beal. So we got to be kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. We probably have to keep him for one more year because, again, you know, figuring out a Bradley Beal trade probably not going to be the easiest thing in the world. And I just don't think it's going to be there. So he's going to have to stay for another season, unfortunately, um, which kind of sucks. But that's just his contract. Now, like I said, we're going to send out Grayson Allen right now. And then we got to figure out a center situation. We do have money to sign a center, but I don't know if there's like one in free agency I'm dying to sign. But let's try to trade Grace now in a way. So we are simply going to just trade Grace now into the Los Angeles Clippers. We're going to be getting off his contract and Derek Jones Jr. contract uh, expires sooner. So while we're not getting a pick back, I do like the ability to get off his salary a lot sooner. So and Derek Jones gives us kind of a backup power forward, which is what we needed anyway. So that feels good. So now this is probably what we're going to be running with. Once again, Bradley Bill will be gone in year number three, which is going to be or after year number three. Uh, Ryan Dunn and I'm still probably gonna try to give Ryan Dunn and Drake Powell more minutes though and then we need a center so I'm gonna sign a big man to put on this roster so um let's see I kind of want to take like a flyer on someone so we could get like Jalen Williams which I don't hate uh Nick Richards is down here but I think easily uh Dron Holmes wouldn't be bad either uh signing him would be pretty cool so I don't like uh hate that so either Dron Holmes or uh you know Jalen Williams would be fantastic I think both would be awesome so who do I want is the question. I think I'll take Jalen Williams. Uh, six points, five rebounds, three, uh, 31 percent from three. So give me Jalen Williams as kind of a body at the center position right now. So yeah, that will be our off season. So like I said, quickly, it's a slow and methodical approach. We still have a lot of work to do, but Bradley Beal's contract will be gone. Uh, we have Grayson Allen's contract gone. Uh, Vanderbilt will be gone. I could resign him though. Technically, you got guys developing. Amon Thompson's up to an 83. But yeah, there's still a lot to get done here. Ian Jackson's up to a 78. Uh, all of that is looking great. But let's go look at the rotation. Last year's rotation did not matter. We had too many veterans to even worry about what we were doing. So let's get into year number three. And uh, let's uh, make the best of it. I think we're going to play as many young players as possible. Let them develop. See who we have. And uh, like I said, man, we're slowly resetting this thing. It definitely needed to. So... Power's going to last 24th overall. Here is our rotation. So it's Amon Thompson, Beal. Unfortunately, actually, you know what? Honestly, don't hate the idea of just benching Beal. Like, what does it matter at this point? Uh, so I do want to start Ian Jackson and I think Drake Powell. So I'm going to start Ian Jackson and Drake Powell because why the hell not? We're going to suck anyway. So might as well give these guys as much minutes as possible. So I don't really care about Beal's future here, clearly. Uh, I don't care about Derek Jones getting minutes either. So I'm going to give these to Ryan Dunn. So Ryan Dunn's going to get these. Ooh, not that many. We're going to give him like 15 or whatever. So 15. Beal will play 18 minutes a night, uh, which kind of feels weird. But at this point, like I said, I don't care about Beal's development. <laughs> I want him gone. So uh, we'll do something like this. And we're just going to give Drake Powell and Ian Jackson as many minutes as possible along with Amon Thompson. And I want to see their shot tendencies as well. So Amon Thompson obviously is not a guy that's going to sco go score. Beal shot tendency can be lowered. Uh, connect can be lowered as well. 
He's never going to be really the star here. So I really want it to be Ian Jackson and uh, Drake Powell to just take as many shots as possible and see if these guys can develop into something for us because that's kind of where we're at. So that is what we'll roll with. We'll see if it ends up working out for us. Let's simulate this season and let's let it ride. So once again, another very bad season, but if we can see those guys on the all rookie teams, that'd be great. So both Ian Jackson and Drake Powell both make it. So that's phenomenal. So Ian Jackson averaged 18 points per game while Drake Powell averaged 16. So that's a good sign. At least those guys put up some numbers. Let's take a look at the player stats. So you had 18 from Ian Jackson lead the way with Drake Powell with 16, 13 from Chifino, uh, 13 from Dalton Connect and 11 from Amon Thompson. So let's go ahead and submit these playoffs. And let's see who goes on to win the championship. And this offseason is where it can truly all start. Bradley Beal will be off the books. We'll have a bunch of veterans come off the books. We'll know exactly where we're taking this team as a Brooklyn Nets to go on to win it all. But year three has come to an end. And I cannot wait for year four and then this offseason in general. Because we're about to have a wide open plan here. Which feels good. So uh, we are getting our 2027 pick. It's projected to be in the top four. Obviously, I would love if it stayed there. So let's see if it does end up being there and it stays at three. So we really can't complain about that. I will absolutely take that. And I believe that's all we have in this particular draft. Now, I don't know much about the 2027 draft class. Uh, I think we can probably move on from Mike Boonsholzer at this point as well. He's got one year left in his deal. Let's move on from him and let's get a new head coach in the building. So um, as far as who that can be, I mean, uh, who do we want? Um... I mean, if uh, Ime Udoka would come here, that'd be... Uh, he's not going to accept that, though. So that's too low of an offer. Uh, what else we got? So we just need a coach with decent ratings. Uh, we got Mike Munoz, I just fired. So Cedric Purdue or Darko. I mean, Darko could definitely maybe be a good candidate. So we're going to get Darko. So I'll take Darko. I think uh, Ime Udoka might have accepted our offer, but uh, we'll take Darko. And then we'll get Ken Garner and maybe get uh, Randolph here. Let's see. So we are going to get, I think... Garner. Yes, yeah, so we get Garner. Uh, and then we can grab a post D e coach and then we can figure out what we're doing in the draft. So uh, let's look at mock drafts to give myself a little bit of help here. Let's go to draft night, go to mock drafts and let's see who I should be taking. So uh, we have Stokes, we have Ariza, we have Arenas, Gaskins, Caleb Holt. I know we need a big man of the future, but clearly that's not here in this top of the class. Um, so if we go to Prox Best Scouting, so try on Stokes, Hall of Fame. Okay, I got to keep that in mind. Hall of Fame and all-star so clearly we want stokes or arenas in this draft if we can get them uh does this guy have any relation to gilbert arenas i don't know to be honest with you uh maybe i feel like an idiot saying that but let's see what happens so number one is going to be tyron stokes number two is going to be the other guy isn't it so yeah of course it's but or no it uh arenas is still here so i know we just you know have a couple guards that just played but i mean this guy has hall of fame ceiling we got to take him so uh let's see does elijah williams have that all-star Hall of Fame on Gaskins as well. Do we get our power forward though? Caleb Gaskins? He sounds familiar. I don't know if I know him, but you know what? We kind of need a power forward in the future. We kind of have our shooting guard potential in the future. Um, I guess we'll take Gaskins. I don't know if that's a mistake on my part, but we'll take Caleb Gaskins here and we get a 77 overall while Arenas would have been a 78. So I don't think I could have gone wrong with either, but I'm happy with it. So Vanderbilt accepts his options. So he'll be our backup power forward. Connect, Ian Jackson, Ryan Dunn are all coming back. And then you got Hoshifino, Amon Thompson, which obviously are going to be must re-sign. So uh, let's re-sign both of them. So Amon Thompson, give him his contract. So we'll sign him to a nice little contract and we'll sign. Uh, we're not re-signing Buell, obviously, and I'll re-sign Hoshifino as well because I want to keep him around. So uh, we're going to announce everybody. Goodbye, Bradley Buell. I'm so excited you're finally off our books. All right, so let's see what else we got. So we got Amon Thompson, Hoshifino. We have Drake Powell, Ryan Dunn. We have Don't Connect, Ian Jackson. And we have a game plan, but we need a center because as much as I like Jalen Williams and Osa has not developed that much, we need a starting center. And we do have the cap space to sign somebody, but we got to use it wisely. So, you know, getting Derek Lively would be amazing. Uh, if we threw him in a bag, which I don't know if that's a great idea in this CBA is throwing a center who probably doesn't deserve that much. Well, Lively is a great player, but uh, Klingon is also your average, you know, $13 million. The Mavericks would more than likely accept this unless if something just went incredibly wrong we got Ke Keelil Ware here as well. Um, I mean, Derek Lively would obviously be the best option we can throw this money at. I'm not getting bull bulls our starting center. So I'm going to throw uh, Derek Lively a fat contract, and we'll see what the Mavericks respond. If they accept it, they accept it. If they don't, they don't. Let's see what happens. So, of course, the Mavericks don't accept it. We get our center, so I can't complain. So let's go to player, or don't match it, I should say. But I think 
we have kind of a good thing going here. So Ian Jackson up to an 81. We have Drake Powell up to a 79. I don't think we have our superstar. Uh, Amin Thompson did not develop into like an 87 like he has in the past for me. But we have a fun young roster. I think Phoenix fans could at least be excited about this team. Uh, but this is going into year four. I don't think we are contender. But uh, we are just, you know, finding Beal off the books. So I can't really be too mad about it. So uh, I'm excited. I think if we can be like a, you know, fun team that wins 30 games or something, I really can't be mad. So uh, that would be fun. If we can win like 30 games this year, I would absolutely take that. So Alan Thompson, Drake Powell, Ian Jackson, Gaskins, Lively, Connect, Hachafino, Vanderbilt, Jalen Williams, and Ryan Dunn. And we will run just a 10 rotation and we'll also make Ben's utilization a little bit lower. So... We'll run it this season. We'll see what happens. And we will see if maybe we make a surprise appearance in the playing tournament or something. Oh, yeah, baby. This team was extremely fun. Luka Doncic wins MVP. Tyron Stokes is rookie of the year for the Kings. Jairus Walker, six man. Giannis defensive player. Collier's most improved. And John Morant's your clutch player. And Mark is your coach of the year. So here's your All-NBA first team. All-NBA second. All-NBA third. And then do we get like an all-defensive representative? I know Amon Thompson has made these teams before. We do get a SAR, but no Amon. Here's our rookie first team. So Gaskins does make it. Uh, so let's see what he did. 14 points per game on the season, which is great. Arena's average 10. So I don't know if we got the better player, but, uh, you know, rookie season went pretty well for Gaskins. We are the third seed. So we won 50 games this year, which was quite exciting. Very, very good. 50 games. Getting Derek Lively in free agency obviously probably helped. Ian Jackson's averaging 20. 6.5 from Drake Powell. 14 from Connect. 14 from Gaskins and 13, 6, and 8 from Amon Thompson up to an 85. 13 from Uchifino, 7 from Jalen Williams. And then, like I said, Lively with 6, 8, and a block. I don't know if we're going to get a playoff series win, but hey, I'm excited to just be here. The fact that we've turned this team into what we have at this point, I can be very excited about that. So we get Portland Trailblazers in round one, my favorite team personally in real life. Uh, they pretty much have the same team. Even Brogdon found his way back to Portland, I guess. All right. Grant's still here. Scoot, Simon, Sharper's still here. Jer Jamari Walker starting power forward. Let's see if we can beat them in round one and get a playoff win. And unfortunately, we're just a young team that I guess was not ready for the moment. We get bounced in four. But hey, now the fact that we made it is a great sign. And I guess we lose to the team that almost just won the championship. So I guess we can't be too mad. But, uh, you know, it would have been really nice to, uh, you know, get a win in the playoffs there. But um of course our pick well i guess we have cleveland's pick from that russell neal trade which uh, ends up being 30 so nothing crazy uh darko still the head coach we just made the playoffs with them we'll leave that the way it is obviously all right well what do we do next i mean we could try to go for a superstar i guess if we wanted to i don't know who that would end up being but draft night like i said we only have the 30th pick i'll let the assistant gm take whoever they want there so we're going into the fifth season, which could be technically our last season if we do get a championship. But I don't know if that's going to happen. That's just probably uh, not realistic. But you never know with this game. Uh, but free agency. So we do have Booker and Durant in free agency. It would be funny if we brought back Devin Booker. Uh, we have, you know, we do have $39 million to spend. But that's without resigning Connect and also uh, Ryan Dunn. Do we want to resign either of them? Ryan Dunn didn't do too much. We could pass on them and sign a $39 million free agent. What do we want to do? Um, I like my center rotation a lot. I like my power forward rotation, especially if Gaskins develops. Um, I guess shooting guard spot. Although Drake Powell is phenomenal. I guess it just depends on who's here. So let's see. We have Alex Saros restricted. Demonte's bonus, no thank you. Keontae George unrestricted, but not really what I'm looking for either. Paul George too old at this point. Dillingham. Belil is interesting. He's unrestricted, but I like my... F and he's not really much of an upgrade from... So yeah, I think we're better off just almost re-signing everybody and just seeing what our options are at the deadline. Because this free agency class is kind of trash, not going to lie. Like, our best option is to go re-sign Booker, but, uh, I mean, we traded him, so I'm not going to bring him back now. Uh, I don't want some bonus. Alex R would be fun, too, but, um, you know, he's restricted. So let me just re-sign Don Connect and re-sign Ryan Dunn and call it, and we can maybe visit the idea of making... Us connects getting off from the Bulls, but we can uh, maybe visit the idea of making a uh, trade for a superstar at the deadline. We'll just kind of see. Maybe it won't even feel necessary because the team is just doing so good. And like, you know, Ian or Drake Powell and Ian Jackson just developed enough that we don't need it. But at the end of the day, I don't think an 84 overall as our best player is enough. So we will see all of our options at the deadline, kind of see what's there. And we make that superstar trade. 
this will be the fifth season we could make it the final one if we get the championship but i won't end it off if we don't get it if we don't get the fifth if we don't get our championship this year i'm not going to end it there so we'll see we'll definitely visit the deadline and see what our options are and if we can get a superstar who i think makes sense and elevates this team to where we want to go then we absolutely will pull the trigger now at the end of year number five luca wins mvp you got isaac hayes rook of the year jerris walker six man will be defensive player nicola is your most approved in golden state Alburn's clutch player and Jordy Fernandez coach of the year for the Nets. So I decided against making a trade because, well, I'll show you in just a second, but um, do we have any Suns representatives on an all NBA team? We do not, uh, but we are the sixth seed in the West and we, I mean, Ian Jackson kind of had a coming out party and Caleb Gaskins 16 points per game as well. So like this big three that we've drafted seems to be developing into something special. So I'm kind of hoping that continues to go that way. We'll see what player progression looks like next off season. And if we don't like it where it's at. Then I think we can maybe look at making that trade, but I kind of want to see how we do once again with this core and we'll just kind of, uh, figure it out after this. So we did still Derek lively from them. Now they do have Paulo Boncaro in Dallas now, which is phenomenal for them. So that leaves uh Jalen Williams out of rotation, unfortunately, but yeah so dallas lost Kyrie. they've signed gg jackson who's an 88 overall in 2k now and they have paulo so i don't think we're gonna win this series to be honest with you but hey you never know as i always say so many current round against dallas and we are going to even it up so i guess we're not done yet all right well let's see if we can win game five to make things interesting here and we took the lead for a sliver of a second and we are going to take it again at the very end. And that's all that matters. So 25 from Caleb Gaskins. Now we got to win game six to close them out. And if we beat this Dallas team, I feel like we could beat anybody. Because Apollo, Luca, GG Jackson trio, and 88 GG Jackson, that is. And we're going to blow them out. And we do beat them. So 32 from Amon Thompson, 30 from Ian Jackson, and 21 from Caleb Gaskins. So now we get a really big test as the Oklahoma City Thunder, who, of course, are always very good in 2K. But they've been beatable lately. They did draft AJ's in 86 now. So I don't know how this is going to go. They have Koa Pete as well. Uh, Noah is down there on their bench. They have a very good, you know, young up and coming roster. So Ryan Dunn ended up taking a starting spot. Interesting. All right. Game by game here. So game one goes to Oklahoma City. And it's going to continue that way. And we are going to win game four. Okay. We're back to where we were in the Dallas series. Can we win game five again? That would be cool. I thought we were done for, but we have the ch a sliver of a chance here. We take it at the end like we did in the other game. We do not. Okay. Let's go. Eight man rotation. And let's see if we can win game six. Game six in Phoenix to take this back to game seven. OKC. They have the lead though. And I think they are going to simply run away with this one. So, hey, we got to round two. That's a nice gigantic step we just took. But it is time to look into what we do and i actually kind of have an idea on who i want to go for because they sucked this year and he'd be an excellent addition sacramento gets number one and i don't think we have a important pick in this draft but let me double check so we have 19 and 20 uh but yeah that could help us i guess maybe make this trade do we have the salary necessary so uh just to kind of give it away i don't know how i'm gonna run this rotation once i do this but uh the 76ers sucked so getting maxi i think is the way to go here so i'm gonna try to get tyrus maxi we just simply need more scoring and i think maxi brings that to the table and then some now i don't know if i want to trade on thompson necessarily but that would probably be the go-to guy to trade away just simply because we're sitting out point guard for point guard i guess i could send out technically one of the other forwards and then have you know powell although powell's doing good i mean i like what ian jackson did this year so clearly we're not going to trade him away uh, kill Gaskins might hit a stride and develop this year So I think it has to be I mean, we could try to keep Amon Thompson on this trade but let's say it's Huchifino so I guess we can do this without Amon Thompson so it's Vanderbilt Jalen Huchifino 19 and 20 a future first as well and another future first all of this for Tyrese Maxey what do you say Philadelphia they don't agree okay so they don't agree to that so maybe we're going to need a more serious player. What about if we throw Osa in here as well? That does not make a difference just yet. What about 2031? 2030, I should say. 2031. I don't think that's going to make it. Oh, it does. Wow. That made a difference. Okay. Well, we got Tyrese Maxi. We'll figure out what we're going to do with Armin Thompson. But uh, you can't deny the ability of getting Tyrese Maxi out of this team 
I don't know how we're going to run the rotation just yet, but I guess Amon Thompson maybe comes off the bench, which I don't know. I don't know if I love that necessarily, but I mean, we added a Iris Maxi to the team, another guy that could score the ball like crazy to try to push ourselves over the hump. I can't be too upset with it. So um, I'm happy with it. I guess Amon maybe hits the bench, whatever. I like Amon Thompson the starting five, but I don't really trust these guys developing enough. But if they develop and we have Maxi as well, then... We're a contender next year, so we can't be mad. All right, so let's go to player options, and let's see if in year number six, this could be it. So Powell, Gaskin, and Vasquez, accepting all of those. I know Ian Jackson's a free agent. Clearly, that's going to be a guy we resign. so let's do that. So Ian Jackson, we're going to let Jalen Williams go, I think, unless... Do we have a good backup center? So no, we don't. So I guess we got to resign him, unless we get somebody else, which uh, might be possible. So we can get Drawn Holmes or Gafford... Uh, drawn Holmes. We can get Drawn Holmes. So let's. I was thought, I was thinking about him earlier. So let's get Drawn Holmes. So Ian Jackson, Drawn Holmes, welcome to Phoenix. So we'll take that. And now I'm gonna play progression, and we can go into year six, and kind of fill it out. So Ian Jackson's 87, which is great. Dunn and Gaskins are developing as well. All right. Well, I am very excited. I'm excited about what's about to look like. Now we could also move on with Thompson around if we wanted to, but we'll see. Let's see what this is going to look like first and foremost so i was gonna list fifth overall we're three and a half balance which is kind of crazy that we haven't gone up farther than that so uh they want to start ryan dunn which is fun or which is interesting so ryan dunn 84 overall ian jackson 88 a small forward gaskins i think what i want to do is i think let's move almond thompson to small forward he's six seven he doesn't move up as much as i wanted him to but that moves Ahmed Thompson. Let's say we play Ahmed Thompson at shooting guard. So Maxi, so that puts uh you know Drake Powell on the bench, which kind of sucks. And I like what he's done, what he's done for us. Uh, but I think I'm cool with it. So let's do something like this, and let's see how this goes. Let's simulate this season. Maxi Ahmed Thompson, uh, Ian Jackson, Derek Lively, Caleb Gaskins. Let's see if we can be like the first seed in the West this year. So at the end of the season, things went extremely well. We got the first seed like I wanted, which is great. Uh, we don't have any All-NBA representatives or anything like that. I don't think we've had anything on these All-NBA teams other than all rookies, of course. But we are the first seed in the Western Conference. So we got exactly what we wanted. We had 26 from Maxi, 20 from Ian Jackson, 18 from Caleb Gaskins, 14 from Drake Powell, 12 from Mom and Thompson, and 10 from Dolan Connect, 8 from Ryan Dunn, and 7 from Derek Lively. I mean, when you really look at this team, this team has developed extremely well. But let's see if we can put it all together and go to the conference finals, maybe to the finals, and get a championship. So we get Memphis in round one. They are the eighth seed. Hopefully, we just take care of them pretty easily. And they are going to win game one, but we do beat them. And now we get to play the Golden State Warriors, who don't have Stephen Curry anymore. So let's see what they have. So There's Nicola, who is here now. They have Keegan Murray as well with Hami Hawkins, Jeffrey Guerrero. Uh, rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero. Uh, you probably, uh, hopefully, you guys know who that is. But Patrick Williams, Dyson Daniels, Brandon McCoy. Sidgi and Jackson Davis. All right. Well, let's go again. So my current round against Golden State. And we are going to be up three to one. And we're in the conference finals. Let's freaking go, baby. All right. Thunder or Utah? I mean, give me Utah. Uh, that'd be kind of fun. Let's see. Uh, of course, it's OKC, though. All right. Well, we kind of pushed this team last year. So hopefully we could do that same thing. We won game one by 32. So, you know, game one was not a sweat, which is nice. Game two, so far, so good. Three to zero, and I think this time... Okay, well, the Thunder were no match this year. I don't know what's going on, but like I said, man, the Thunder sometimes are just a lot easier to beat than they used to be. I think ever since they lost Josh Giddy, they just aren't as good anymore. You got Ian Jackson, 89. Like, the team the team has developed phenomenally. Like the team is extremely good. And now we have a Finals appearance on our hands, and we get the Hornets. So, uh, Ian Jackson, Commerce Finals MVP... We get Charlotte, who has Lamelo, Ariza, Brendan Miller, Michael Rodich, uh, Nicola or Nick Richards, Jalen Suggs, Trey Murphy, and David Roddy. You know what, Charlotte? I commend you for coming this far, but I think I have your number. Game one, one to zero. Game two, two to zero. Game three, three to zero. And it looks like we're only going to be pushed to five games this year. So it looks like trading for Maxi was absolutely the answer to all of our problems because once we got him, we became absolutely unstoppable which is just so much fun so a minute 30 left 109 to 97 let's end this video off with some fun 
gameplay here. So Charlotte's going to have the ball. But man, I love the team we put together. It can't, you know, it came a long way. It took us six years to get back to being a competitive team again and getting back to the finals. But this time we actually won it. But hey, man, uh, we traded Booker. Not the best trade in the world. But uh, to get back to this point feels fantastic. I absolutely love that we're able to get this far. They're going to give it to Lamelo, Lamelo three, and he is going to hit that. All right, so we're only, they're only down nine. Low key, this game isn't over just yet. Low key, it's not. But not until I yam on it with Ian Jackson. But uh, we're going to actually reset this bad boy. So, ooh, that's a slow release. Can I get the offensive board? Yes. Can I give it? Ooh, Amon Thompson. Not the best three-point shooter. So, uh, definitely going to take note that Ian Jackson's release is slow. All right. Um, we're getting the screen. Amon Thompson's going to get the ball. I'm not even paying attention to shot clock. My apologies. I still got that off somehow, though. And we still got the offensive rebound. I don't even know what's going on. Greg Powell, three. Release it. Nope, not going in. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, not a good possession on my part, but all good. We got the board. Or I just fouled Brandon Miller. Okay. Well, we got the basketball twice on rebound. So at least we kept the ball away from Charlotte for as long as possible. Lively shouts you for that. All right. Maxie's back on the court. I think I can make a shot with Maxie, right? Surely enough. Let's see. Can I do something with Maxi? They might foul me. No, they don't. Okay. Maxi. Let's try to make something happen here with Maxi. So uh, 2K is going to draw us up a play, I guess. All right. So let's see what we're going to do here. Maxi. Oh, nope. We got a wide open. Uh, who is that? I don't even know who number 30 is. That was... Uh, is that Gaskins? That might be Gaskins. Oh, Gaskins? Yeah, it was Gaskins. Okay. So hey, we got a shot off. We made something. I can take that. I can sleep at night now. Okay. Let's give this to Maxi once again. We want to run a play. Let's just free ball it though. I'm just going to shoot it through with Maxi. And we got another offensive rebound. Let's shoot another one. Not going in. Another offensive bound. Just put this boy up. All right. You know what? I'll end it there. I hope you guys enjoy the video. At the end of the day, we brought Phoenix to championship. It was a long path to get this way. But man, talk about the Suns in real life. They're going to eventually face the inevitable, which is... Um, you, you're probably gonna have to trade away Booker, Durant, or do something because I don't think this Suns team is going to be able to compete in the West. They've really handicapped themselves. The Bradley Beal trade was a massive mistake, and I don't think this is going to be a hole they can dig themselves out of. But that's just my opinion. Maybe they proved me wrong. I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.